buddy. Welcome. <laughs> Give me a second here. Okay. Well, that didn't work out as planned. Please hold on. There we go. <laughs> um, I'm doing this live a little bit differently. I'm going to put some sticks here to make sure this doesn't fall down. Please hold. Where did I just hide those sticks? Okay. Um, long story short, I've packed up most of my home studio and then... My uh, workspace is currently filled with uh, resin. So I'm kind of, there we go. I'm gonna zoom out just a tiny bit. Sorry about that. YouTube does not make it easy to zoom in and out. Okay, well that was fun. Hopefully the phone does not fall down. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let me get this pulled up. And for anyone watching this later, this is a live video. The whole point is for me to chit chat with my friends, to have fun. It's not going to be like a really quick tutorial. And if that bothers you, please just don't watch. Please don't leave me some nasty comment about how that bothers you. Okay? Okay. <laughs> hey, Veronica. Hey, Laura. Laura. <laughs> Laura. Hey, Katie. Hey, Barbie. I know. I forgot it was Wednesday, too. I hope I have the right day, right? um welcome welcome so just really quick i'm going to go ahead and that's so awesome kim kim said uh she did her first acrylic pour last night <laughs> yay yeah please hit that like button okay um all right so I do have a couple announcements I'm going to share real quick. So first of all, it is definitely moving week. All right, so a um, little bit of an upheaval all over the place. But uh, I do have a an auction on Facebook going on. So let me go ahead and actually, Veronica, my computer is just giving me grief. So if you are able to grab that link, that would be amazing. Okay. All right, fine, 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 fine. Let's just get started. Okay. So first of all, <laughs> um, I've got three colors here that are currently in the mystery box. They're three of the colors. So we're going to use these. I think these are just gorgeous. These are all metallic colors. And I thought they would look great with a bottle bottom and also on a vase. So we're gonna be doing a bottle bottom and a vase today, okay? Now, um, this one, this canvas is just slightly saggy. So as a tip, if your canvas is saggy at all, spray the back with water. And of course, everything's kind of packed up, so. There we go. There were so many, there were so many spiders that we like rehomed. <laughs> I felt kind of bad, but I'm also like, I don't feel too bad. It is my studio, you guys. Let me, I'll just raise this up while we're at it too. And I don't have my spinner, so we're going to do... Just a bottle bottom and then I'm going to be just tilting it, okay? You did your first marble recurring. Awesome. We've got Australia in the house. Yeah, everybody let me know. <laughs> yeah, the spiders are coming with me. How else are we going to handle all the mosquitoes? Just kidding, no. I was like, you guys got to go outside. Sorry. Um, let me know where everybody's tuning in from. Say hi in the chat box. And this is your time with me live. So this is your time to ask any and all questions you may have. Okay. And this table is level. Just FYI. Of course, my paint stands have a lot of paint under them. So that could theoretically make it not level. But I'm not going to worry too much. We've got Washington, Florida, Jersey, Oklahoma, Tennessee, St. Lucia. Oh, I love St. Lucia. 
one of my favorite places. Okay. Hey Dan, first a new subscriber. Awesome, awesome. Well, make sure you ask me any and all questions, okay? So this is a 12 by 12 inch canvas, and for that you need about um, nine ounces. I know, right? There is definitely going to be a point where I can't have wet paint because you can't really move wet paint <laughs> easily. All right, we're using all mixed media girl pouring paints. So this is for the bottle bottom pour. We're going to start off with white, and then we're going to use these new mystery colors. So this one is called Black Current Shimmer. It's like a dark, almost like a dark mauve or mauve, however you want to say it. Um, but it's a metallic version. This one is Duck Egg Shimmer, really light blue, super pretty. All right, let's see. Um, how do you clean off silicone to prepare for resin? Oh, I did answer you on Facebook. <laughs> um, so I would make sure that the piece is 1000% dry. And by that, I mean fully, fully cured. Like you need to give it the full three or four weeks. Wash it. Uh, you can actually wash it under the sink with some Dawn dish soap. And, oh, I wanted a darker color in here. I'm gonna use some of the deep sea in here as well with a Dawn dish soap and then just water. And then I would probably still even pre-seal it uh, with a like a spray sealer and then resin it. <laughs> no worries. Your pour wasn't the greatest because you didn't know how much paint to put on the base. Yeah, well, you live and learn, you know. I think we throw a little bit of purple in here too. Why not? And then white. I definitely don't want this to be dark. We've got a couple, three dark colors in here. I'm kind of want to offset this with something warm though. Although it's a little late now. We're gonna throw some gold in here. Why not? Hopefully it's not too late. And we'll do more of this duck egg shimmer. Okay, that should be plenty. All right, so moving this aside, and then we're gonna do the bottle bottom, and I'm not going to be spinning this. Once again, it's gonna be a tilter. Yeah, I, you know, I am the worst with packing and unpacking. I have to say, Jada, I have boxes that are still packed from when I moved into this house six years ago. So, super horrible at that. All right, this is the medium bottle bottom. It's the two, no, the three inch one. And for those who don't know, I sell these on my website. They come in a set of three, two inches, three inches, and four inches. My favorite thing to do is to spin these out, but we're gonna just wing it today with my mid-move painting. I should have thought this through in terms of drying space. I'm gonna have to figure that out in a second. I, I think it'll be fine that I put that gold in there because it'll, like in last, it will just kind of give it a tint more than being a main color, which I think will be good. Ooh, some pretty colors in here. I did not put a lot of purple, so I don't really expect to see that. Maybe just some hints of it. But it's primarily gonna be the blues. See, there's a little bit of purple there. We also got the, the uh, black current shimmer in there though, which is also like a purple. So, there we go. I love it. I am very, um, <laughs> very happy with these colors. Oh no. How's it going, Michael? Can I help you with something? Let's see. We got a lot of people from Kenosha. Yeah, I hate moving with a passion. 
All right, so where did I just hide that? Oh, I put the sticks underneath my painting. Hold on. I need another stick. Stick, stick, stick. I know I have some in here. I might have to improvise because I'm not sure where I may have put them. Oh, I remember. As long as I can kind of remember the boxes I put things in. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So this has the little like finger grips on here, which makes it real easy. I'm just going to lift up and I'm going to set it on top of that cup that I was pouring in for just a minute so that it can um, drip off into there. And then I'm going to take a stick and I'm going to wreck these petals. This is not required, but it's what I love to do. I think it just makes the best pattern. I will do one coming up someday where I kind of wreck it even more crazy, but for right now, this is my, my favorite. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And I like to let this fill in. So I'm going to just kind of push down for a little bit. Just takes a second generally. There we go. Super excited about these colors. Come on. Go, go, go. <laughs> All right, while that's finishing filling in, let me just clear up a drying space real quick. Move boxes. Okay. There we go. Drying space created. All right, and now we're going to tilt. Um, there's not really a good way to perfectly maintain this design unless you spin it out because it's got five petals. If it had four, we could go a little more towards the corners, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to kind of stretch towards a corner and then back to the middle then towards another corner, kind of back to the middle here. I'm going to kind of do this slowly, but I'm not trying to perfectly maintain this design. And we'll probably end up with it off balance. And this is obviously one of the reasons I love doing it on the spinner because you can really maintain that design. But it's also fun to tilt it. It gives you a different look. All right, this ended up with a lot less contrast than I thought it was going to have, but that's okay. I do have a silicone mat underneath here. I actually like that. I'm not gonna put it back towards the center there. Yeah, I like this. Okay, what do you guys think? Let's bring you in for a little bit of a close-up. It seems a little bit blown out light-wise over here. Yeah, I think... Oh, hopefully I can put this phone back. <laughs> so, a little less, little less contrast than I wanted there. That's okay. Yeah, much softer than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I did use a lot of light colors, so I like it. I like it a lot. And I love how these lines continue around the side there. There we go. Okay, I'm try to put the phone back here. Hopefully it works out. For whatever reason, the camera that it uses for this YouTube Live is like super near the edge of the phone. It didn't used to do that. <laughs> ah, okay. What is the best way to keep the pore glossy after it dries? 
Um, so what paint you use is going to make a difference and some paints are just glossy and some paints are not. Also what medium you're using, but I typically don't worry about that because you can always add gloss at the end. So once this is dry, I'll just spray it with a gloss sealer and it will be good. Uh, so I don't worry too much about whether the paints themselves are glossy or not. Um, yeah, my paints typically dry kind of satin. So like a little bit glossy and then I'll add gloss. All right, let me set up another little drying area to the side over here. And then we'll do our base. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do this next one up on here as well. But we'll see how that goes with the vase because the vase is kind of heavy. <laughs> okay. And I think I'll use more gold in this next one too and definitely a little more contrast. Bonnie, welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's start off with filling our cup. And just lost my paper towel. So let's see, what colors do we want this to primarily be? I do have orange. I don't think that really goes with this color combo though. Um, unless we want to completely change the color combo. Let's see, orange might go with these two, but I think it'd be a little too much with the green in there also. I think we're gonna have to skip the orange for tonight. <laughs> orange and teal, yes. But if we have like the green, blue, purple, and orange, that's a little, that's a little much. <laughs> okay, greener than the last one, I agree also. Okay, I'm gonna start off with just a little bit of white. Now, I always gotta keep in mind that whatever I put in the cup first is going to be what lands on the base, really. So, starting off with a little bit of white, some green tea shimmer. Um, and we can even throw in, throw in a smidge of Everglade green for some darkness there. And then we'll do the black current shimmer. And I'm just putting really small amounts so far because I want all of these on the base. Now we'll get a little bit of the duck egg. Hey, Megan, still waiting on some testing. Other organizations don't move nearly as fast as I do. And definitely some gold in here. All right, so those should all end up on the vase. But we're also going to do some deep sea. So that's like a really deep blue. And we'll layer these again. Less white this time. A little more green. And for vases, I just use enough um, paint to cover the canvas that the vase is sitting on. And that always works out pretty nicely. So this will still be pretty subdued. Like none of the colors we're using in here are really bright colors. They're all kind of, um, lower on the value scale I guess I think the gold is probably the brightest one in here <laughs> although the Everglade green is pretty pretty bright also okay that should be about enough let me put a little 
Hi, Zippy. A little more of that in there, and we'll top it off with a little bit more of the green tea shimmer. Okay. That should be plenty. And now, whew, almost knocked over the colors. Let me go ahead and get this. So I've already cleaned the outside of the vase. It, it has, it may look wet, but it's just got a little bit of wire, water inside the vase, which is okay. And we're gonna set this up on a cup. And let me make sure that this fits into the camera just fine. Not too close, hopefully. Okay, good. That's just perfect. All right. Now, I never worry about this too much, but try to make sure your vase is kind of level on the cup. Sometimes mine's a little tilted. Not the end of the world. And then I try to just center it on the canvas. All right, here we go. So I'm going to pour in kind of a tree ring. Now, remember, these colors that I'm first pouring out, these are the ones that are going to go onto the canvas. They will not be on the vase because it's gonna keep moving, but it's all part of the process, okay? Trying to kind of not have my hand in here too much. <laughs> Look how pretty. We still have more to do. And if you ever don't like your vase, you can always go over it again, okay? All right, I think that's pretty exciting. Let's come down for a side view real quick. Okay. You guys see my empty shelves there? Who remembers how this got here? Anybody? <laughs> this is quite the test. So we're going to just let this drip for probably about two minutes. Yeah, this is my favorite. I feel like I could do vases all day long. I'll give you guys a hint on this. It involved my husband's face. <laughs> so pretty. Okay, I'm going to put it back. Good. I think that's good. Let it sit for another minute or so. <laughs> um, it was the mallet smash. <laughs> and Johnny was sitting over here on my left videoing with another camera. We were like, let's do two angles on this. It'll be so awesome. And so his face was just like right here. And then I took the mallet and I smashed it. It went everywhere. Anyways, it was fun. Oh, Megan, I already answered you. <laughs> I literally just answered you. Uh, not yet. I will definitely let you know. We are still waiting on some testing. But I definitely answered you. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, so good question. How do you determine how much paint is needed for your canvas? No, okay, for your vase. So I use the same amount of vase for the vase that I would need for the canvas that's underneath. So underneath here is a 12 by 12 canvas. And so for that, I need about nine ounces of paint. So I literally just pour that over the vase and that covers the canvas and the vase. Because you have to realize that most of it's gonna run off the vase. It's not gonna steal too much of the paint. So, all right. I wait until it's mostly stopped dripping, which is about now, it takes about two minutes. Then lift up from the cup. Don't stress too much if you accidentally touch um, like the edge of your vase because it's going to keep dripping. It's going to keep going. Uh, so if your finger kind of smudges it up a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. 
this is what all the colors combined look like. <laughs> a really pretty teal color. Um, yeah, Megan, we are so close. And Megan, if you want to email me, um, I will send you some samples as soon as I have them. I will let you be the first to try them out, okay? I'm hoping within just a few weeks. I like to let it at least mostly close up. You don't have to let it completely close up, just to explain why, I, why I'm still just sitting there instead of tilting. And then these, I think they look better when you do tilt versus on the spinner. Like the bottle bottoms I love to do on the spinner, but these, I think they look amazing when you tilt them and you can really control them. <laughs> so still less contrast than I thought I was going to get. <laughs> but I'm not mad at it. I'm loving these colors. And these, I definitely always like to have it kind of be off center. I don't know if you remember, but this was the center. We are gonna pull it back here. So it'll be closer to the center, but it's still gonna be off of it. Yeah, I like this green tea color. And I think it goes well with that Everglade green. And it goes well with teal color. Okay, there we go. What you guys think? <laughs> no problem, Megan. Yeah, I love the pattern that you get. So this pattern in here, that's from doing it over the vase. So you're not gonna really get that with any other technique. Yeah, you know, the lighting isn't that great. Let me bring you down for a close up. I don't know why I feel like the lighting's being super funky. It actually looks more washed out from here. Um, Ellen, to find the like button, you have to close the chat box. It's very annoying, but. Yeah, it actually is less watch, washed out than it looks in the camera. I'm very happy with this. This part has pretty nice contrast. Uh, I think I got just the perfect amount of gold in here. I have just kind of little pops of it. And then let me... We're gonna try to kind of rotate this without messing it up. Okay, that's at least most of it. <laughs> so the vase, super, super, super pretty. So happy with it. I think maybe seal it with some resin with a smidge of gold dust and it'll be perfect. But I really like it. And this, super pretty. Can you guys see the colors a little bit better from here? Looks less washed out. Yeah, definitely kind of beachy colors. All right. Let's try to put this back. Don't drop the phone in the painting. Yes. Underneath here, we've got some gorgeous skins and this is a silicone mat. So I'm gonna just leave this like this cause it's already raised. Um, and we'll just let those skins dry underneath and then they peel off. If anyone hasn't tried a, a silicone mat yet, they are amazing. The only downside is if you're doing back to back to back projects, you have to have like a hundred mats. <laughs> um, and I don't have quite that many mats. Um, so more often than not, I actually use paper, which the skins won't peel off of but you can still um, cut out the designs and use those in your projects. Uh, Norma, the gold dust, to be perfectly honest, I'm not 1000% sure if it is mica. Um, it's a very, 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 very fine glitter. I'm 99% sure it is mica. It doesn't specifically say it on the package, but um, 
Yeah, it's a product that is sold by Stone Coat Countertops. And it's a super duper 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 fine, very sparkly gold um, dust. And I put just a smidge in the resin and it just gives it this little beautiful sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> Um, freezer paper by freezer paper. Do you mean, I think people mean different things when they say freezer paper. Do you mean parchment paper or do you mean wax paper? Parchment paper works great. Wax paper, not so much. Um, Christine, I use the skins in all kinds of things. I've used it in, um, actually I have one incomplete project right here. Um, Sometimes I peel them off and I make them into like picture frames. So I just glue it around. I obviously have not completed this. I need to cut off the excess and finish gluing. I even have this one here that I'm going to glue onto here. <laughs> Incomplete project. Uh, and then I use them in necklaces. I've used them in bookmarks. Um, I've used them in wine glass charms. I've used them in magnets. You could literally even make entire paintings from them also. Um, question is, do you pour the resin over just as you did the paint? Not quite because you only need maybe a couple ounces of the resin. And I typically like to do it on a cup turner because that way you don't have any resin drips along the edge. So the cup turner goes sideways like this. So I'll put the vase on there and I'll spread the resin around with my hand. Takes maybe about two ounces. You can do it upside down on the cup like this, but then you're going to just have some drips on the bottom to sand off. Okay. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really know what freezer paper is, but I think it's like the same as um, parchment paper, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know. I'd have to Google it. How do you make an entire painting with skin? Well, um, you can just simply glue them all on in an abstract piece, or if you want to get real creative, you can take skins of different colors and you can cut them out in shapes. Like if you're like really, really artistic. Um, and you can literally make like a mixed media painting with those skins. Yeah. Oh, good to know, Becky. Not totally sure on that. I don't cook much. I gotta say. Freezer paper is wax paper, but only coat coated in wax on one side. Interesting. All I know is I've used wax paper before and it worked out horribly, but parchment paper works great. Also plastic. Like if you just put down some painter's plastic, the skins will peel right off of that. Any kind of plastic, really. I used to, um, I used to take my paintings and just put, uh, like one of these on top of another canvas, like a larger one that still had the plastic wrapped around it and just let it dry on that. That's what I used to do. Then I... And then I grew up a little bit and got these silicone mats, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, Lori, I uh, may not have understood you, but I uh, definitely did not do a vase coated with resin and then pour acrylic over the top. If, if I put resin on the vase first, then the only thing that I would have poured over the top is more resin or alcohol ink alcohol ink specifically not acrylic ink if you put wet acrylic paint on resin it's not going to work out it will never dry or cure properly acrylic paint and resin really don't mix and pouring paint and resin really really don't mix so i know it can sometimes be a little confusing there's so many different materials okay so what is the cheapest but best product for paint pours to prep your canvas before you put paint. I don't prep my canvases at all. So that's the cheapest. Most of them come pre-primed. Uh, it's actually kind of harder to find one that's not pre-primed. So 
uh, you shouldn't have to worry about it at all. If you do want to prep it for some reason, I would just get a, a matte paint and primer spray and that should be pretty fast and easy. Parchment paper is for baking. Freezer paper would not work well for saving skins. The paint would not peel off well. That's my sentiments. But yeah. <laughs> uh, once this dries, can you just spray it with gloss? Yes. However, the base, I do recommend sealing with resin. If you just spray it with gloss, it will stay a little bit sticky and it won't be as durable. You can do that. If you want to be very careful with it, you definitely can do it. That's how I used to do my bases. But resin just makes it so durable, like it's the paint is never going to come off ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I'm heading back to my packing. Let's answer one more question here. Tammy said, what does it mean if the paint dries clumpy, especially on the base? That means A, it wasn't mixed fully in with whatever you're mixing it in, or B, it's just old paint. Yeah. So... <laughs> All right, you guys have a fantastic night. I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Please, please, please check out the art auction on Facebook. If you go to the, um, the tab, what is it? If you go to, <laughs> there's like a social tab or whatever. What's it called? Community tab. If you go to the community tab on my Facebook or on my YouTube, I've got all the links there also because there's also a special on resin gallons this week and maybe some other fun stuff happening i don't remember <laughs> thank you guys for joining me see you guys next time